Welcome to Screenplay, where we discuss elements of pop culture for the community. I'm your host, Noah Bailey. Today we will be joined by guests Rosie Palazzolo, who will be sharing her review of the Netflix original series, Fuller House, and Christian Hubbard, who's going to talk about 10 things you should know about the Marvel character, Bucky Barnes. But before we start our interviews, let's watch an edited piece about special glow ropes done by Heather Soto. Hello, I'm Heather, and thank you for tuning in to my edited piece on light shows. Now, last week I focused on gloving. This week I'll be focusing on pixel whips. Basically, pixel whips are fiber optic whips that allow the user to create multi-dimensional light shows. I can stand here and tell you all about it, but I'd rather let you see for yourself. So, check it out. day and see you next time. And now it's time for our first guest, Rosie Palazzolo. How's it going, Rosie? Good. How are you? Doing good, thank you. So you watched the highly anticipated Netflix original series, Fuller House, based off of the classic sitcom Full House. Yes. How was it? I expected a lot more, not going to lie. Mm. Um, I had very high expectations, and I feel like this is a lot more cheesier than it was before. Fascinating. Like, it's the acting is kind of almost fake in a way. Okay. Compared to how it used to be, where it just mm. kind of flowed. Now, do you feel like the actors on the show that were on the previous show, do you feel the cheesiness from them, or do you feel that from the new actors who weren't previously on Full House? A little bit of both. Mm. I, I mean, if you see, like, the older actors, like, even when, like, DJ is talking to, like, her kids, like, you can kind of, like, see, like, that she just kind of, like, is acting kind of weird. But, okay. like, maybe because she's in that mom role that she's not used to playing or something. Sure. But just for me, just, like, it was way too cheesy. But as as the episodes kind of go on, maybe you just kind of get used to it. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's just, I'm like, oh, okay, we're going to play on our phone for a little bit. <laughs> Interesting. So do you yeah. think that they kind of kept the writing of the show in the 90s but tried to make it present? day and 21st mm -hmm. century and that's why there's the weird clash or do you have a Not thoughts on that really because before it was more like a feel-good family show mm -hmm. and now i feel more like they actually talk about more like adult issues and they like do. the way how they dress is like more modern which is fine but like if you look at aunt stephanie sometimes how she dresses it's mm -hmm. not family friendly correct so <laughs> and in the third episode they were drinking like alcoholic beverages mm -hmm. they went to a bar and there were guys hitting on them trying to buy them drinks and i was kind of surprised because i was like this is definitely not the full house that um, you know, there was like language in yeah. the first episode. I'm like, this is definitely not the Full House like I grew up on. Exactly. That's why I was like, like I don't know. I'm not really a big fan of it. Yeah. I like the one episode where Joey ends up coming back to babysit, and all the kids are like on their electronics, and he mm -hmm. just completely takes them away. It's like, no, you need to be a kid. <laughs> yes. You need to like play with silly string and slime guns. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So, so um, I wonder if they're just trying to cater to the new, to the new um, generation of kids that have grown up on more mature content, you know, than, like, previous... Possibly. Generation. I mean, even so, like, if you saw, like, in the pilot, like, they're doing the exact same things as yes. the old one. They literally put them side by side. So I feel like they're just trying way too hard to, like, either try to make it the same or just try to, like, do their own little spin-off. I just... Uh -huh. I'm just not really into it. Like, yeah. I, I can't keep watching it. <laughs> no, I understand. <laughs> so. um, one thing I at least feel like was 
there's not an there wasn't this there was it was very nostalgic, but there wasn't this big nostalgic boost that was all the show was about. That mm -hmm. was the one complaint I had about Star Wars is I felt like all they were just trying to do was make it nostalgic vil like and do everything about that. Do you have anything? Yeah, I mean, I feel like they just really like hi hyped it up and everything, so I had like such high expectations for it. But they got renewed for season two. They just announced that today. Oh, so I didn't hear that. Nice. Yeah, so they have to be doing something, right? Maybe, yeah. Like I said, maybe it gets better as I go on. Mm -hmm. So. So would you suggest people to watch it, or would you say watch something else? I say watch it because all the fans say that it's really, really good. Mm -hmm. And if you look at what the critics say, they say the complete opposite. But everyone has their own thing opinion. For sure. So I feel everyone should go ahead and watch it and see what they think. Fascinating. Well, thank you very much for that. Now it's time for our second edited piece, also by Rosie. Um, not just watching Fuller House is what she did this past week. She also went to the um, Chicago Auto Show. So let's hear what she has to say. And we are back with Christian Hubbard, who is going to share with us 10 things we should know about the Marvel character, Bucky Barnes. How's it going, Christian? I'm good. How are you, Mel? Doing good, thank you. So, you are now famous for doing these <laughs> 10 things you should know about blank Award articles. Award-winning. I have to say that's awesome. Thank so you. please, share your next installment with us. Well, <laughs> last time I did Iron Man, and I've done Batman, but coming up in May, we got Civil War which is Sebastian Stan's third Marvel movie. He signed on for nine, so we got six more with this guy. So I thought it was my wow. duty to, to educate the masses on Bucky Barnes, a character that he plays within the MCU. Mm -hmm. Now, there's two, there's two different iterations of Bucky in the MCU, all, along with the comic books. There's pre and during World War II, and then there's after World War II, because like Cap, he's awake in the, in the modern era, mm -hmm. 70 years after World War II. So a couple little, little fun facts that I found out about Bucky from reading the comics is that before he was actually Cap's sidekick, he was just like me. He was a huge Captain America fanboy. He had huh. stacks of comic books, he had posters, he had little action figures. And the funny thing about it is that he actually lived on the army base that Steve Rogers lived on. See, for a while, uh, Cap wasn't actually Cap. He was, he, I mean, he was Cap, but didn't, people didn't know that it was Steve Rogers that was Cap. So he would hang out with Steve Rogers, mm -hmm. and then Steve would go through these missions as Captain America. And he would have had no and idea. Bucky had no idea, yeah. He, he once walked in, uh, in the locker room, and Cap was changing into his gear, and then Bucky forced him to make him a sidekick. Oh, wow. And the difference between Sebastian Stan and Bucky in the comic books is that Bucky was, he was a, he was a scrawny little kid. You know, yes. he was 18 years old fighting in the war with Cap, and in, in the MCU, he's actually a lot, three years older than Steve Rogers is. So they definitely adapted it in a you know, different way, but I mean, Sebastian Stan's just, he's, he's glorious, so I'm not, I'm not upset about it. Hey, that's okay. <laughs> so, 
he is now in present day. Yes. With Captain America. Yes. For the last 50 to 70 years, he's been in and out of cryo freeze. So he's mm. they when he died in Captain America: The First Avenger and in the comic books, he was actually kidnapped and like found by Russian uh, scientists. That's why he has that that red star on his arm. Is they, they completely removed his arm, oh. gave him that that cybernetic arm, and then he's been an assassin, waking him up to. I mean, he's credited with over a hundred assassins over the past fifty years. No way. Yeah, he's taken out people from from America, from Canada, from Mexico, London, Turkey. Yeah, and he's just been brainwashed. His mind's been wiped every time too. So when he finally sees Captain America again, he has no idea that that's his. Uh -huh. That's his. That's his brother. I had no clue. Yeah. And here I just thought we were going to be talking about the like scrawny eighteen-year-old <laughs> kid that like looked up to Captain America. So I feel very educated. Um, make sure you check out that article by uh, Christian Hubbard. So uh, normally now would be the part of the show where we do screen time, but since the Oscars were this Sunday, we thought we would take the next few minutes to discuss something that is very near and dear to our hearts, which is the Oscars. So guys, what did, what did you think overall? I liked it. I mean, I was really just looking forward to Leo, to be honest. <laughs> like, I was like fast forwarding through all the speeches because I'm like, wait, I want Leo to win really bad. Did you know he was gonna win? I kind of figured. Did this had to be his live? year. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't watch it live. Oh. I had work, <laughs> it's very sad. Things happen, <laughs> yeah. But so you knew he was gonna win. Oh, I knew right? it. Okay, yeah. cool. If I, I, I know you didn't. You, you, your opinion on the Revenant wasn't very high, but I loved. I loved the Revenant. Yeah. I thought the movie was intense. I thought it was <clears> one of his, one of his best acting. Movies besides Wolf of Wall Street, which is his greatest sure. film. I I have such. I was talking about this with our director Austin, and we both just thought it didn't. We thought it was great, but it didn't live up to the hype. Yeah, so like hype what they did it. to make that movie was so cool, but like. The final product just the wasn't. The final product. I was like, I it. felt like Tom Hardy actually upstaged Leonardo DiCaprio. I love Tom Hardy. In the yeah. movie. It wasn't even Tom Hardy to me. I, I, sometimes I was just like, some movie like mm -hmm. that's not that's not my bane. No, it's, 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 it's not. It's not my, yeah, and he did not win. Oh, he didn't. He yeah, didn't win. That sucks. I no was one won, but the guy that did win, Mark Rylance. Who who's that? Who saw Bridget? I didn't even <laughs> see Bridget's Spy. <laughs> me neither. No one did. Typical it's, Tom Hanks movie. It is. It's the typical. Um, like Tom Hanks Spielberg movie that has to get nominated like yep. every time they come out with a movie together. And was Tom Hanks wasn't even nominated for no. Best Oscar was he? No. No, it's just it's so like looked past so they're just like oh here's another. Well, we can't give it to Tom Hanks again. We have to let you know <laughs> Leo. At least it wasn't Sylvester Stallone though. Yeah, that I know. Been. Did you see his look? Though I'm gonna reenact his look when he like didn't win. He was like <laughs> heartbroken, <laughs> completely heartbroken. I was like wow, he, like, and then. And then his brother, I forget, it's like pissed. Frank Stallone, so was so, yeah, was so, so ticked. Mad. And he was like, Leonardo is trash and doesn't deserve to win. And, and, and Wasn't he in the same category? I was like, <laughs> oh, no, wait, sorry. Who was, whoever he Whoever was the saying, guy that won. Mark Rylance. He was yeah. like, who, who, who's he? And I was kind of thinking the same well, thing. Well, we all thought that. Yeah. So, there really? we go. Lady Gaga's Chris Rock. Yeah. Well, that was that. phenomenal. <laughs> that was phenomenal. I loved her performance. Sam Smith stole that from her. Um, that concludes this episode of Screenplay. Um, join us next time for more talk about pop culture and things going on in the community. If you would like to show your love for Screenplay or have suggestions for us or would like to be on the show, find us on Twitter at AU Spartan Media or tweet us using the hashtag AU Screenplay. And a big thanks to Rosie and Christian for being on the show today. I'm your host, Noah Bailey. Until next time.